manifestations of the divine promises. We are stepping into manifestations of God's divine promises. And I believe as we're stepping into Motec next week, we're going to witness um, you know, we are going to witness the, the firstlings. We're going to witness just the presence and the power of God. We're going to witness the evidence of God upon this prophetic word that it will be supernatural visitations, supernatural manifestations, and it will be a manifestation of God's divine promises. Amen. So you will begin to feel it. You will see it. The raindrops of God's glory will begin to come upon your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Joel chapter 1 verse 14. As we are coming together and pray, it says, Sanctify you a fast call a solemn assembly. We are gathered together as a solemn assembly tonight. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of prevailing word into the house of the Lord. So we are doing scripture. The inhabitants of prevailing word are coming into the house of the Lord your God and to cry out unto the Lord. And in the last 30, 45 minutes, we were crying out unto the Lord, pouring our hearts out unto him. Joel chapter 2 verse 12 says, Therefore also now said the Lord, turn ye unto me with all your heart. And I believe that as we've been praying the last 45 minutes together, our hearts have been knitted, united together, pr crying out unto the Lord with fastings. As we have been fasting today, you know, whatever kind of fast that you're taking on, whether it's a partial fast, whether it's a full fast, you know, it is important that, you know, we are coming, and we are consecrating ourselves before the Lord. We are getting in a time of intense word, prayer, worship, and fellowship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just want to read a couple, a couple of scriptures to encourage and stir up our faith in what God is doing. Genesis chapter 17. Genesis 17 from verse 1. In fact, the whole chapter of Genesis 17, we begin to see the promises of God. And in there, there are 10 I will promises of God. As you read that, you begin to see 10 assured promises that God begins to give to us. But I want to highlight, as I mentioned on Sunday, just the subject heading on that, on that chapter you know, I don't know what your Bible says, but my Bible says Abram becomes Abraham. Abram becomes Abraham. And there was a release that God is changing your name. He's changing your situation. He's changing your circumstance. There is a transition that is taking place. There is a turnaround that is taking place. Your situation will no, no, will no longer remain the same. Your circumstances, there is a name change change. There is a transition. We are pressing in because we know God has given us a promise and we know that Motek is coming up with a promise where God is changing our lives, our circumstance from being poor, broke and being in debt and being in distress to a place where God is positioning you as a kingdom financier. God is positioning you for his wealth transfer. God is calling and changing your name. He's changing your situation. He's changing your circumstance. Hallelujah. We are pressing in and we are saying, God, thank you. You have called in this meeting so that we have a name change. So we experience the change from Abraham into Abraham was the fulfillment of God's promise, was the fulfillment of what God had called him out to. So what God has called you out to, what God has called us out to as a corporate body, God is establishing. He's putting his stamp of approval. There's a shift and there's a turnaround and we are pressing in this time of prayer and fasting. We are taking it in fullness and we're saying, Lord, you have changed our name. You have changed our situations. You have changed the circumstance. Hallelujah. I want your faith to be stirred up to begin to see that God is doing something new. God is doing something fresh. You will not remain the same. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a pressing in. Isaiah chapter 61. This is what is happening. The change from Abraham to Abraham looks like this. 
Isaiah 61 from verse 3. To all who mourn in prevailing word, he gives you a crown of beauty for ashes. So where there's been ashes, there's a turnaround and there's a shift and he's giving you a crown of beauty, a joyous blessing instead of mourning. This is what God is doing. This is what is brewing. This is what God is establishing. He says, festive praise instead of despair. Have you been in despair? God is turning it around to a place of festive praise. Hallelujah. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. And we were taught and we were told that God wants to manifest his glory through you. So you have been planted that his glory may be made manifest. Hallelujah. Verse 4, this is what is happening. He will, they, you will rebuild the ancient ruins. Repairing cities destroyed long ago. I don't know what it is that has been destroyed for so long. It seems so destroyed. But God is saying he is rebuilding the ancient ruins. He is repairing the cities that have been broken. And he says they will he will revive them again. Amen. They will revive though they have been deserted for many generations. And let me repeat, and that is exactly what we also received on Sunday. There is something that God is doing about the generations. There is something that he is doing because I, and I, and I, so I'm so convinced as I keep saying that we are from a place and a generational standpoint where God is saying, I want to give you access into hidden treasures. I want to give you access into things that I established long before. You may not have had, you know, somebody who opened doors or you, you may not have stepped into the fullness of such a revelation, but he says, I want to establish a new generation. I want to establish a new lineage through you. I want to establish and prove to you that I'm a, I am the God of generations. And so I'm so convinced and I know that the reason why God is putting more tech together, it is because he wants to establish something new. He wants to establish something that will perpetuate through the generations. Amen. There are your children's children's children, grandchildren that are going to be born in the years to come who will not know or understand what debt is. They will not know what lack and poverty is, but they will begin to know that as they read the history books, they begin to know that you stood up once upon a time in the year 2023 and you declared and made a decision that Lord through me, through me you will establish the generations that are to come. Hallelujah. That's why the enemy fights and contends because he knows that what you are digging into, what you are pressing into is beyond yourself. If your desires was just to own a spaza, you know, the enemy will not even bother with you. He will make sure you can have that spaza because he knows the spaza doesn't go anywhere. When the winds come, when the storms come blowing, that spaza will just blow off because it does not have deep foundations that begin to see that the assignment is to build schools, the assignment is to build hospitals, the assignment is to rebuild the ruined cities, the assignment is that cities can be entrusted unto you. Amen. Hallelujah. God never birthed his nations into, in debt. So it is out of order that nations can be in debt. It is not God's divine plan and purpose. But somebody has to see it. And when you press into it, it becomes a reality. Amen. Oh, my time is up. And hallelujah. I was just trying to introduce what I want us to pray for. Hallelujah. From Abram to Abraham. Thank you, Lord. Verse 5. Foreigners will be your servants. They'll feed your flocks and plow your fields and tend your vineyards. You've got to see it. Genesis 11, God says, whatever they imagine to do, they will. So you've got to imagine and see how there'll be foreigners that will serve you. That means, you know, you know it's somebody who just for lack of a better word, come out of the blue. 
Somebody who has no attachment to you whatsoever will come and serve you. Will come with harvest just for you. You've got to see it. You've got to expect it. They will feed your flocks and plow your fields and tend your vineyards. Oh, Rake Rabba Shanta. Allow me to prophesy and say, God will send people that will pay your children's school fees. God will send people that will buy that vehicle. God will send people that will buy your home. God is sending people who will, Ah, oh, Kerabba Shanta, Rianda, Rada, Karianda. There are people that are ready. They 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 are ready. The question is, are you ready? Can you see it? Can you believe it? God can do it for you. There are people that are ready for you to sign a share certificate. They're looking for you. They're looking for you. They want you. They, they're looking for somebody who's, who, can, who they can give shares to. Are you ready for that? They're looking for someone they can invest in. Are you ready for that? It is there. You've just got to imagine it. You've got to see it. You've got to prepare yourself. You've got to position yourself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm. Glory to God. You've got to see that God has the best for you. You see, you, you only get what you see. And what you bargain for. But if you want your children to be in the best schools, God can do it. If, 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 if you want share certificates, God can do it. If you want things established in your life, God can do it. Hallelujah. He says, you will be called priests of the Lord. Ministers of our God. You will feed on the treasures of the nations. And boast in their riches. This is what happens when your name changes from Abram to Abraham. Instead of shame and dishonor. You will enjoy a double share of honor. Double share. Where there has been shame. I want to prophesy. Double honor is coming your way. Double honor is coming your way. Prevailing white ministries, double. Double honor. Double honor. Double honor is coming your way. You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land. And everlasting joy will be yours. Glory to God. Double portion of prosperity. Everlasting joy. For I, the Lord, love justice. God loves justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. Mm, 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 mm. If you've been a tither, if you've been a covenant child with God, he is faithful to his promises. He is a God of justice. He, he, he does not like robbery. He does not like injustice. He does not like wrongdoing. And so the seed that you have sown, God refuses for the enemy to steal. God refuses for the enemy to take of the seed that you have planted. I, the Lord, love justice. Justice has been released. It's like I can see the judge, you know, when he stamps that gavel and he says, it's done. Justice, recompense is coming your way. You've got to believe it. You've got to see it. You know how it will happen? You know Joseph was, went to prison one night. And the next morning, he was putting on a new robe. The next morning, he, was, he had to have his hair shaved. The next morning, he had a robe that was of royalty that was put upon him. From the prison to royalty. You see, because when that... When, when, when that uh, Gabriel is pressed by the judge and he says, this is it. You wake up and the situations change. They turn around just like that. That is why the prophet, the, the, the prophet could prophesy in 2 Kings chapter 7. It says, by this time tomorrow. Because when a decree has been made, you've got to know that the, the situation will turn. There's a turn, there's a turn, there's a turn. And you've got to position yourself and keep pressing in. Hallelujah. I, the Lord, love justice. I will faithfully reward my people for their suffering and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be recognized and honored among the nations. Hallelujah. 
everyone will realize that they are a people the Lord has blessed. We are a people that the Lord has blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Allow me to quickly just go through a few things so that we can just take a minute to pray and agree and seal on this and we know that it is done. These are the things we said we are praying for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, just for your reference as you're going home and read tonight. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 3, verse 1 to 3, talks about the cloud of witnesses that is there with us, running with us. So I want to let you know, and it says, uh, Jesus, for the joy that was um, before him, he endured. So what is it? There's a pressing in that we need to do. There's a pressing in that we need to do. We need to keep our focus. We need to keep our focus and know that God is the author and the finisher of our faith in what we're doing. So we're going to press in all the way, regardless of how the situations look, regardless how, how the circumstances may look and feel. After God has given a prophetic word, we press in all the way. Amen. That's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. And we also see, in, I mentioned already, Second Kings, uh, verse seven, Second Kings chapter seven, verse three to eight. They had to press in. They had to press in. They got up and they said, "If we stay here, we will die." But who knows? If we go in there, so it's always about going in. It's always about going in because if you begin to look at your situation and think and just cry and say, "But the marriage has just gone so bad," but the finances, but you, if you stay in that place, it's not going to do any good. So if you're in that place where it seems like you're in a barrel, you might as well get up and go and say, let me rather take a step forward. Let me rather have faith and believe. Let me rather keep moving on, keep moving on, keep moving on. Because when you stay in that place, it is not going to change anything. In fact, if you stay in that place, the cloud becomes bigger. Amen. So step out like those lepers. They were weak and feeble, but they said, rather I die doing, rather I die trying, rather I die confessing, rather I die believing. Amen. Amen. So keep believing and keep pressing in. Mark chapter 5, the woman with the issue of blood, it says when she had heard about Jesus' healing power, she pushed through the crowd. Are you pushing through? Are you pushing through? So the call to fast and prayer is a call for you to push through, to press in, to keep going. Hallelujah. Keep hearing God's word. Take in God's word because each time the woman heard the word, heard that Jesus, she heard of Jesus and she had the power to press in and to push in. So what you need in order to get power to get up and go is the word. Get the word and it will propel you. Get the word it will push you forward. Get the word and you know it will it will begin to show you the things that God is about to do in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. There is a pressing in that is needed. So lastly, what are we pressing into? This is what we are pressing into. Seeking his face. We want his face more than ever before. To walk before him holy. He says, walk before me and be holy. We've got to choose to say, Lord, I, you know, you, you look into yourself. You choose to fix yourself. Just say, Lord, I may come short. I may fall short of many things, but I want to walk holy before you. I want to please you. I want to please you, Lord. For God's promises to be established, as I said in Genesis chapter 17, there's 10 promises that we see that God gives us right then. A cry out for restoration. There will be double honor. Where there was shame, there will be double honor. So we need to thank God for that. And number five, as I said, we keep speaking that this is the biggest, the biggest, biggest, biggest motek ever, the biggest motek ever. Amen. We want to lift up the speakers, the delegates, the invited pastors, um, all our ministers that will stand up to minister. And of course, we declare that the budget is met in Jesus name. Amen. So now that your faith has been pumped out and you know what God is doing, I want you to stand up. And for the next two minutes, we're just going to pray through these prayer points in agreement and we declare that it is done in Jesus name. Amen. Father, we thank you. 
Lord, we have done according to your word and to your promise, O Lord. You, Lord, you asked us to call upon a solemn assembly and that all the inhabitants of prevailing word must come into the house of the Lord. Father, we have done that to seek your face. So, Lord, we thank you that as we seek your face corporately, as we seek your face, Lord, in our homes, on our knees, lying down prostrate, as we are in meetings, Lord, as we seek your face, we thank you that you will manifest.